So today I'm going to be working on this very, very special tree, um, and it's very dear to my heart. Um, not just because it came from a very good friend, BC at Bonsai Cornwall, um, also because it's an English elm, and English elms, as you know, have you know been rattled and um, afflicted by Dutch elm disease. Uh, this is one of my two favorite species, the other one being sweet chestnut, um, in particular the American sweet chestnut and the problems that it had with a particular fungus and the battle that has gone through. Now, I only have Chinese sweet chestnuts, but um, I always think about the American sweet chestnut when I'm working on them. And I think it's because of that connection to that, you know, troubled past that these trees have had, which endears me to these species the most. Now, I do work on Chinese elms, which I try to stylize almost in the form of an English elm, but they are still not English elms. So I'm going to bring you in closer here, and just like I did with my Chinese elm recently, I'm going to work from the bottom up and give my reasonings for why I'm doing what I'm doing, and what's going through my head. Okay, so I'll do a full spin around on the bottom part of this. So you have a lot of sucker growth here, here, and these ones are more oriented towards the trunk. So we'll address that first, and I will, I will let you know why. So the reason why I'm taking the suckers out is because they are hardened off, so they would have contributed something, but I don't want the roots to uh, get too thick down there. Let the, let the tree do that, not the suckers. So next I have this guy and this guy. They're pretty close. This one is attached to the trunk, and this one is more or less a sucker, but it's close to the base, so it will help thicken up the root that that's from. So I'm going to leave these, and the reason I'm going to leave these is because they're not part of the design of the overall tree, but these would make good, um, these would make good thread grafts, so this tree is going to need that, especially as we go more up into the tree. So we're going to start with the lowest branch first and I'll bring you up. It's this branch right here. So this is the dominant branch and ideally we'd like this to be th the thickest branch. So the only thing we're going to do is look for structural flaws or what we don't want to be in the structure of the tree later. So we'll start down here at the base. Got this guy growing off of it. It would contribute to the energy, but it would also swell this point right here, so we're not looking forward to that. And we're gonna travel further up. We might as well just stay on this stay on this back side. We got this shoot coming in to the trunk, actually touching that trunk. And we have two thread graphs, like I said, down here already set up, so we could keep this direction printed out, but it's not, it, it doesn't really have a lot of strength. But we will keep one leaf and cross our fingers for a direction change later. So it comes up and it forks off right here. I know it's hard to see because of some of that, those leaves in that crotch right there, but we will see what it wants to do. So the only thing I don't like is this is kind of going up into that. And just as we did on the Chinese elm, we will massage that down, coax that down a little bit and stretch out the lignans. That puts it on a more flatter 
plane angle. Now I'm well aware that doing that is um, essentially dumping auxins. It's essentially essentially taking the dominant growth and telling this to keep going higher and higher. When you do massage it down like that, you are going to lose some of that production. I'm well aware of that. So that forks, and then we have this third one. Just pretty close back there, so I have to decide is that going to be in a future design or not. And um, see what the spacing looks like. I'm just going to remove this one leaf so I can see. Actually, you know, I, I quite like that. And since, since this is developing, this is not thick enough. It doesn't have enough energy. If this did, I would prune back and angle shift it and bump it out this way, but it's not, it's not ready. This one is, but my objective is to thicken this branch. So just because I can prune, um, I still have the, the initial goal in mind. So this one forks out at the end. It has this, there's a growth back there. I don't know if you see this one right here. It's kind of going up and slightly into the trunk. And uh, I'm not gonna take it all the way off, but what I will do is I will plan on that to be a direction change. So it'll go this way. And the idea is maybe in time it'll hover above this bifurcation point right here. Traveling over, you have this little dead flag. There's no reason I did that. It just bothered me. And we have this going straight up. We are looking for thickening that could contribute, but also I don't think massaging will, will take that down to an angle I like. <clears throat> massaging it down and getting that plane shift is a, it's a limited trick, right? So that won't work here, but we do have this leaf and particularly this leaf underneath. This one right here. That's pointing in a perfect direction that I would like it to go. So I am going to prune there. I know I said I'm developing this and I still have that. I still have that in mind, which means this long one that's coming straight out it is not, it is not going to get pruned back. So we come over, uh, actually let's address this guy. It's going straight up. I'm not necessarily wanting to keep that, but I don't want that to get any bigger. So I'll leave a little bit of leaves on there for interior. And then coming over, we have this one that forks out at a good angle. I'll leave that guy alone. And then to the front side, or at least what I think is the front side, we have all of this. Those angles look pretty good to me. We'll let them keep doing their thing. This one is going straight up. Like I said, it would contribute to the energy, but if I let it go too far, it actually becomes a structural flaw. So we don't, we don't want that. The last decision on this branch is these two guys right here. Now we have this this one that has a, a very nice angle. It comes out, it bends, it shifts over to here. It just has a better better quality of movement. But I wish it I wish it had some growth a little little further back. Now I could switch it over to this one that's coming out from that branch. I could switch it over to this this weaker guy, actually, actually stronger. It looks actually stronger, but I lose a little bit of thickness. This one is a little more obtuse. This one's a little more acute. So in this case, I don't, I don't necessarily like it, but I'm choosing that acuter angle. I'm choosing that more vigorous shoot. And, uh, I think I think that's that branch. 
So we come up to our next, our next branch, which is this. It's an odd branch. It goes up and then it, it goes back out here and it keeps going straight up. And then you have this shift right here. This shift right here that hovers above this uh, might be ultimately what I want. And then at a later time, this will go down. This branch will be above it. It mimics that movement on the lower branch, so it goes up, and then it, it makes a shift right there. This would do the same thing, sort of mimicking down here. I know this side is bare, but we will potentially address that in the future. So it's developing. I could prune this off and just put everything into that. It would be a little bit, you know, I think because this branch back here is so dominant, it's, it's holding this, this little guy back. So I think I'm actually going to take it off just, just to dump the oxen. I, I am, I am losing some of the, the rapid thickening, but just to dump the, dump the oxen, leave a, a little bit of a stub right there and wait until that really takes off before I clean that up. And then we get into the next one first branch really on the left side way up here ideally i would like it to bifurcate closer to the trunk the bifurcation is all the way out here and relative to the first dominant branch down here it's proportionate in thickness it is proportionate and it's actually very strong if you see all that growth it's actually very strong. It, it almost competes with the dominant branch in strength. So to push the energy back, I think I'll just concentrate on the, on the outer pruning. So we're just going to take it back to twos on those outers, not necessarily because that's where the silhouette is going to be only to dump that oxen and only to give these lower branches a more dominant priority for that branch. Okay, so we come to perhaps the trickiest part of this English elm. There was a point where I was thinking maybe I was going to prune this upper trunk off but you know I, I really don't like that idea I think as much as I can I like to work with the the whole tree and everything I can utilize and, and whatever whatever I know in my mental bank to to keep as much as I can I'm not interested in exaggerated tapering because I know that Tapering will happen if I leave a lot of growth down low to progress and I'm, you know, aggressive on the top. I believe that tapering will come. It won't be exaggerated and it'll take quite a while, but um, I'm pretty conservative when it comes to that. So these are almost on the same plane. It's not an ideal situation and this one is coming straight out. And it may be in time that I take this front one off in favor of the back one. But for now, I am just going to treat them as a valuable um, contribution to the overall structure of the tree. First, I'm just going to start by taking this, um, this one right here. Can you see that? I'm going to take him off because he's going straight up. And he would want to be an apex on the top of a tree in time. And I'm just going to look at the structure, the structure of the branch. So it does bifurcate pretty close to the trunk, maybe 
maybe closer than I would like, which, well, most of the time I'm complaining about being too far away. Now I'm complaining about it being too close. I just see where all those branches are placed. This goes over here. That's nice. This comes over here, kind of competes with this back one. So we'll address, we'll address this first. So, because I don't want to compete over there too much, I think I'm just going to take that one off, let that grow, let that grow. Come over to the other side. I think all those I'm going to let go. Come on to the other side, which competes, does it? compete over here well kind of kind of this guy back here does ultimately it's up to whether I keep that on the other side and I think I think I'm gonna take that this is a pretty strong branch and we're getting closer to the top this is like halfway so we're going to do as sharp as an angle change as we can. So it's gonna come up and it's gonna go this way. A little insurance policy. So that branch understands that it's behind on its, on its duties. So let's see, this is gonna come out. Might keep that little guy under there. That's actually it for that one. So we're gonna turn it around. I know it's a little bit hard to see what's going on. But earlier we chopped off this, from this branch we chopped off this because this was there. Which also means we're gonna keep this. It's not really strong enough for my liking to prune that. And we will come over here. Actually, I have to make a decision because this bifurcates. It bifurcates again, but you got this one going the other direction. So actually, this does bifurcate. But there's another one up here, very close. So I actually have to make a decision. So look at the front. That's a little bit of a tough choice. I think I'm gonna give it some room. So it's gonna come over. I know I said I wasn't gonna do that, but it comes over, give this guy a chance. It's actually a lot happening over here. I'm gonna bring you up more, give you a better view. All right, I don't know if that's any better for you, but we've got a lot of strong growth on this and we got a lot of competition with what's going on. So strong growth, we're going towards the top. We want the bifurcation to be um, closer than it was from the branch down below. So we have those two little guys way back there. I'm not gonna go to two, I'm actually gonna go to three. I don't need to go that close. So we got this one popping straight up. Coming straight up. Because of the angle it's at, it's not really a candidate for you know massaging down. So we're just gonna do a direction change. So at the angle, my scissors are pointing. I left just a little bit of a flag. I'm, I'm, I don't want to be too aggressive on that angle. Might as well cut this leaf too. Okay, now we start getting into all this mess in there. This actually competes, this competes, this grows straight up. 
So let's get rid of the one that's growing straight up. Let's get rid of the one that competes. And what do we do with this? Do we have any buds? I am not really sure. Ideally, I would like something to be right here, coming that way. So, in hopes that that cambium will sprout out buds along the cambium ring. We're gonna leave it like that. We are not gonna put cut paste or anything like that on there. And if it does, I'll choose a bud down here that pops out from that cambium. And then I'll, I'll rub out the buds from the top. Uh, elms, English elms, I know for sure, they will, they will put out bud, buds on a on their cambium from a cut. The wood has to be two, three years old to do that. So I think uh yeah we'll see if we'll see if that gives a go. Coming over to this side. No, we're gonna trust that this is going to do something. We're going to trust it. So because we're going to trust it, I'm going to get rid of this one, which would compete if it did take off. This shoot is too weak. We'll let it go. And this one is actually strong enough to consider. And I think I'll take this back fairly far. Three branch, three uh, three leaves on that one, and that's actually the the mid plane all done. It'll have more variations. Things will come up here. Things will come out. I know it looks a little bit of flat right now, but that's only because there's two opposing branches here. So this is a point of three, which is a is a problem I'm gonna have to address in the future. But you know. We'll let them contribute to the work as you know as much as we can and we're going to come up follow along here this section right here and that bottom left side is what we're looking to thread graft so we have two thread grafts near the soil line and we also have the we have the right branch the dominant branch which we can utilize come back in, even come back into here. So we're gonna go to the top and actually it's it's almost finished. So the top should be relatively straightforward. We have basically structural flaws, but we're looking to be aggressive. We're looking to whatever the tree is doing up here, we wanna do that down there. This can, this can always be developed rapidly and we can always choose to prune later if if you you know you chose to do a trunk chop so we're going to do structural so decisions up here everything is thick enough to be pruned relative to the bottom it's a little close to the trunk let me see if I have a bud and I think I do at that very base we're gonna just leave this a stub in hopes that it comes out at the angle of my scissors and then we have this guy right here keep in mind that as we go to the top we want it to be closer and closer so I don't want the bifurcation to be all the way back here. I actually want it to be 
up here and I do I do kind of want it to spread out and I want to give it a very generous backbone so the angle is exaggerated coming up on the left side this is fairly close to the trunk let's get a let's get a good look at that whole thing yeah i don't it's fairly close on the other side too so i think we're going to get rid of well let's just let's just see how it goes so plan for a direction change out that way might ultimately end up taking that off. Let's clean up this stub right here. Ideally, take should take that back as it's growing. Like right now would be a good time for that to heal, but um, so we got this one growing straight up. We got this little guy who's stunted by all that growth he is closer in i do like the angle of that one but it's kind of weak this is weak too even though it's towards the top i'm almost partial to actually pruning it with my branch pruners and letting that little guy go because it's such a good angle and it's just a tad closer to the trunk. Hmm. Actually, I think I will do that. So we're going to get rid of that. And we're going to get rid of this if I can Get in there and not. Now that will probably throw up buds out of that cambium ring. I could seal it and maybe try to prevent that. I'll do that off camera. If I choose to do that. All right. Let's come to the other side before we get to the strong shoot. So we have this one right here that is coming straight from the trunk in the branch with another little weaker guy next to it. I don't think I want those. Don't think I want those. That was actually a perfect example of a bud that volunteered from a previous cut on the cambium ring. So this comes out from a branch. It's weak. Won't do nothing. And we're getting closer to the top, so we're going to bring this one all the way back. And we come up to the very top. Actually, we'll, we'll start with this one right here. This looks like just a dead flag. And we're just going to be aggressive with that one. We'll see where our leaves are. Let's see what three leaves look like. No, nope. we're gonna go, we're just gonna give it two. We'll go further. I'm basically telling this tree that the top is no longer the priority. The bottom of the tree is a priority until, until this top catches up. And this top will catch up and it will eventually take over the dominance. And then I'll be back doing this yet again so we got this one growing straight up into the tree it's not necessarily bad when you get to the apex but it the angle doesn't look that good so 
I am going to just do a direction prune so this can pop out and occupy this space. Next branch would be this one. It's kind of far away from, it's kind of far away from the trunk, but that's okay. We'll just be aggressive with it. Two leaves, push it back. This is kind of weak, but we're gonna do it anyways. That was a bad call right there, by the way. But you might ask if that was a bad call, why did I do it? Because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to slow this down. I'm trying to make it subservient to the bottom. If I would have left, if I leave, actually, if I leave most of any of these shoots, they will, they will respond with monstrous growth. Looks like we got a bud right there underneath that. So we'll take this to two. That could be three, but it's no, there's no leaf on the other side. And then this one, let's see what we got. We do have a bud here, right where my, we do have a bud there. So we do have a bud right in there at a very nice angle. Let's just check the other side. There's actually three buds back there. I'm gonna take all that away. We have competition for an apex right here. Got this little guy, he's really, really weak. And um, I don't think I want, don't think I want him. Uh, this is obviously the apex branch right here. It has a branch underneath it, or actually side by side with it, that's competing for that space. And you already have this coming off the side. So as nice as that would fill in this area, ultimately, I don't think I want that problem. Okay, so that needs to catch up a little bit. So I'll be pruning that one shortly. The only reason I'm not getting rid of that is I realize it's, it's importance. Last branch, nothing to it but to be aggressive. Go back as far as you can. Ensure that it happens. Let's peel that one off. So we got this guy who's at the crotch of a branch. That's unfortunate because it occupied a good part of the tree up here, but I think, I think that is, um, I think that is it. I think I covered, um, I covered everything I wanted to do, and uh, I actually feel pretty good about it. So I'm gonna bring you back out and just kind of, kind of give you an overview and just my thoughts on what I think will happen. And uh, I actually feel really good about it. So let me bring you back out. So that is the finished pruning of the English elm. Um, I went through it branch by branch. I gave my reasonings from the bottom why I left those suckers for um, future left side thread graft. Also, this first dominant branch, it was just structural flaws. And in the future, we may choose to use that, possibly even both of those branches for a thread graft here. And then we went up to that left side, we took care of some of that strength on the left side branch, the first branch on the left side. 
and we came up to the middle. Now the middle is a place where it's actually in three. You got opposing primary branches going into a trunk that goes up. So that's a point of three. It may be in the future that I have to take one of those off because ultimately I want to keep I want to keep that top, which is why I'm planning on thread grafting. And uh, yeah, I may have to take one of those off. If I was to cut the trunk here, I could bring that back, what is now a bar branch, bring that up to be the new apex, and you would have a tree that tall and developing right around there. But I'm not. I'm going to work with the whole tree and uh, we'll see how it goes as it progresses. Now when you get to the top, keep in mind there's going to be thread grafting in this area. And then at the very top, the apex, we went hard on the pruning. Very, very hard on the pruning because I know the vigor will catch up up there. And this English elm, like I said, this, this came from BC. It's a uh, it's a very good tree. It's got a lot of health and it's responding very, very well. Last year was good. This year is excellent. Could I let it gone a little further before doing this work? Maybe a couple weeks, but it's ready. It's more or less ready. So when the top catches up, I'll let it catch up a fair amount. I'll get those angle changes. I'll get those branching options. Let it grow out and do the exact same thing I did. But next time I prune, I will more or less ignore this portion of the tree. So it can really ramp up. The only thing I'll doing, be doing after pruning that apex to dump the energy back is I'll be thread grafting. And that won't be too long. So BC gave me some advice on thread grafting and I'll be starting that probably in the beginning part of June. So the only thing is preventing me from doing it right now is I don't really have the length that I want. So I have to wait a little bit. I want those whips to be long. I want it to be a pleasurable working experience. It'll be my first time thread grafting, believe it or not, but um, I feel pretty confident about it. I would also like to state that that first dominant branch has fantastic movement. It has fantastic switch up of the movement. And I really think it'll make, I think it'll make this tree something really special. So elms are vigorous. So come fall this year, I think it's going to look fantastic. I'm not interested in super exaggerated movements in the trunk. I want to work with this tree. I want it to be what it is. And, uh, you know, something I can, something I can be proud of being in front of me when I'm reading a book or sitting outside, just doing nothing, looking at the sun going down. My favorite time, if you know me, is golden hour, which isn't very long and it leads into darkness, but it's my favorite time of day. And I can picture myself having this tree with me on the table in golden hour, thinking not just about my trees developing, but also the friends I made along the way. And it's a very special tree. So lastly, thank you, BC, for, for this gift. It was very generous of you. Uh, and, um, I'm very happy with it and you know me well <laughs> and uh, not last certainly not least all the tree masons out there whether you hear from me a lot or not all of you guys are very near and dear to my heart and you all have different talents that I couldn't even begin to touch on but that's what makes us strong, our, our creativity and our approach to these trees and just the community that, that is built. Um, but until next time, I will see you guys later. You will be seeing more trees from me. 
that are from BC. I have another tree that I will be working on very soon. It's a trident maple also in one of Gav's pots. Um, I'm not quite happy with the extension or the hardening off on that yet, but it's really, really, really close. So this is me saying goodbye and see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.